the celebrity. How's it going? Hi. Hey. How's it going? I can't see a one of you. Um, before I begin, I just wanted to let you all know that these, uh, these pants are fully inside of me. Um, I really, I really love a high-waisted slack. However, when I want to put these on in the morning, I first ask myself the question. At any point today, do I not want to be actively tasting my labia? <laughs> Getting dressed for tonight was a challenge. Here's a shocker, I, I don't frequent clubs. I, I don't own any club shirts. So, so if it's alright, I'd actually like to begin my set tonight with a poem I've written about the outfit in which I feel sexiest. <laughs> what would I wear to the club of my dreams? <laughs> that shouts, look, I'm gay and I'm not switching teams. <laughs> An outfit that fits me like cream goes with peaches. I've got it. A pair of colonial breeches, <laughs> which, if you don't know, are a trouser of sorts, not quite like pants or capris, even shorts. I'd surely look sexy and strapping and hip, and fresh off my tinsmithing apprenticeship. Paired with a billowing puffed linen shirt, they'd make me a bona fide club coming flirt. <laughs> so while y'all look hot as you sit at your tables, my breeches might say, should I tend to your stables? <laughs> I'd strut to the dance floor, shedding a tear, knowing I'd hit the quan looking like Paul Revere. <laughs> yes, flax-woven breeches worn just to the knee is the club look of choice for a hick dyke like me. Amen. <laughs> Now, this is my club shirt. <laughs> it's, a, it's a six pack of Hanes white men's t-shirts that I asked, I asked Santa for this year and he delivered. Boy did, boy did he ever. All six. Now, my guess is that when most of you all look at me, uh, you do not think that girl has probably had a semi sexual run-in with a band of pirates. <laughs> yep. Allow me to disabuse you of that assumption. <laughs> Here's the thing, I met a band of pirates uh, at a bonfire this past summer. Who... <laughs> my co-workers from that job are here. <laughs> so I met these pirates and they sail uh, uh, during their year, they sail a 19th century replica pirate ship up and down the East Coast. I knew they were pirates because as I approached their bonfire, one of them yelled, Blonde Maiden! And yes, I got a UTI immediately. <laughs> anyway, I sat with them and one of them, one of them said to me, get ready, one of them said to me, it's supposed to rain tomorrow. How would you like to join us for a pirate shower? Oh my God. And I said, tell me everything. <laughs> they said, we don't have running water on board the ship, so whenever it rains, we all get naked, and we go and stand in a field with bars of soap. And I said, oh, I should very much like to come. <laughs> and I, I gave them my phone number. <laughs> I went home that night, and I set my towel and my bar of soap out on my nightstand like I was waiting for Santa. I woke up the next morning to a text from the pirates. They said, bad news. Rain is no longer in the forecast. <laughs> I know. They said, shower canceled. In fact, we've decided to just set sail for Annapolis. <laughs> I do get mixed up with a lot of weird people. <laughs> Guys, it thrills me. It really does. I find that the best way to, to meet a weird person is by having a weird job. I used to be a bed bug exterminator for a thrift store. <laughs> That's what I did. We had a woman who would come in once a month, a customer, and she would buy all of our glassware. And when I asked her why, she said, 
well, I take it home and I smash it with a hammer and I leave it in my backyard as a gift for the fairies. <laughs> I spent a year as a magician's accountant. <laughs> One of my favorite memories from that job is when the magician for whom I worked would play what he called his sport. And this was his sport. Are you ready? He would call TD Bank and he would wait on the line for a representative. And when someone picked up, all he would say was, your bill pay service sucks the royal rod, and he would hang up. <laughs> that was a sport. <laughs> I recently moved out of a weird apartment. Uh, 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 <laughs> the first time that I met the woman from whom I was subletting was the day that I moved in. And so I said, hi, my name is Ashley. It's so good to meet you. And she said, first of all, don't look in the freezer. <laughs> Okay. Now, of course, the obvious response to don't look in the freezer is, say it with me, what's in the freezer? Um, but I feel like the people who ask what's in the freezer are what's in the freezer. <laughs> there were a lot of weird rules in this apartment, get ready. Um, there was a rule that I could not, me personally, not anyone else, I could not keep any personal belongings in the bathroom. <laughs> but guys, I went rogue. I went rogue. You ready? I kept a single hand towel. One hand towel. I said, nothing will come from this, surely. <laughs> Until the day that I came home and I opened the front door and an elderly woman I have never seen before <laughs> is standing there brandishing my hand towel. <laughs> And she shakes it once in my face, and she says, oh, are you trying to start trouble? <laughs> so I would then just walk from the bathroom to my bedroom with wet hands like this. Um, I never properly was introduced to anybody in that apartment. <laughs> Truly, I did not know any of their first or last names. <laughs> when I asked, they said, no. <laughs> One day I left my bedroom and I ran into a young woman with whom I lived, who I'd never met. <laughs> and I said, hi, my name is Ashley, I'm the new girl. And she actually responded, she said, hi, I'm June, like the mum. <laughs> like, so sweet. And then all of a sudden I see from the end of our long hallway, the woman from whom I'm subletting the place, she sticks her head out and it's lit by a single bare bulb in the night, and she looks at me and June and goes, <laughs> and June turns to me quickly and goes, we shouldn't be talking, and she runs into her bedroom. <laughs> I truthfully never saw June after that. <laughs> so if it's all right, I would actually like to end my set the same way that I began uh, with a poem. <laughs> This time, however, it's a haiku that I've written for June in hopes that it resonates with her wherever she is. <laughs> Lay your weary head on a bag of Totinos. June in the freezer. Thank you. <laughs>